What's up, podcast world? Joel Clayfish here, coming to you from Wisconsin on the Fall Life Podcast Midwest series. Today, we have an awesome guest with us on the podcast, Dave Nelson, former Wisconsin Goose Calling champion. And we're going to do a goose calling tutorial today. You know, you hear a lot of goose calling in the field, you see a lot on the shows, but a lot of times you don't have the intimate details of what's going on by the person who's calling. So we figured what better person than Dave Nelson to show us uh, how to break a goose call, how to start on a goose call, what's the first thing you should do, and then we'll get into some of the more intricate maneuvers too. But what's your first thing you wanna do when you pick up a goose call or you wanna buy a goose call? Yeah, well, the first thing, the first thing you wanna do is it's not so much, you know, hands, hands are very important, but when you're just starting, you treat this thing like a party horn. Okay. That's the easiest, the best way to describe it, treat it like a party horn. And when you bring that air up, you don't want to puff your cheeks. You don't want to do that. So you want to bring that air from your diaphragm, from your gut. And the best way to explain it is if, if I was going to take and punch you in the stomach, the first thing you do is, oh, tighten up. Yeah, tighten up. So, or you could put your hand in front of your face and you blow air like you're trying to fog a window. That warm okay. air, that's the air that you want to present into the call. So you're not really blowing from your chest up here like, Nope. You, you want to push that air from your diaphragm, from your stomach, and that takes a little while to practice. And you can actually work on practicing that before you ever pick up mm -hmm. the, the goose call, can't you? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. So what's next? So when you present that air, tighten that, that gut up a little bit, and you blow into that call just like a party horn. It sounds so, just like a party horn. Exactly like a party horn. That's, you got to get that first. That's okay. the first. That's steady. You don't want to... Mm -mm. You want to just practice that, that warm air and that steady flow. What are you blowing here today? This is a crazy train. Jargon, crazy train. Okay, and that's fairly uh, easy for someone to learn on. Yeah. And I've heard you blow it, and I know it makes some really fantastic, more intricate calls, too. Yep, yep, it does. Both these calls are, are jargon calls. The Wrecking Ball, I like. It's a little higher pitch. You can get deep on it as well. Uh, but I do think the Crazy Train is a little more user-friendly. It's right. a longer call, so uh, it's a little bit deeper, but as far as like a beginner, I would say beginner call, uh, this is probably your better bet. So how do you turn the party horn into a goose call? Yep, so that second part, you get your party horn, that, and again, no hands, it's just, get that, that steady tone. Then you're going to take your tongue, you take the back part of your tongue, and you're going to push it to the roof of your mouth, pretty, right. pretty hard. All right. And what that's going to do is it's going to cut the airflow off, and when it cuts the airflow off, it rolls it over into a, a cluck. Okay. Right? And that gives you your honk. Like so you're, you're, you're blowing the air, the steady air, and then you push the top of your tongue in the pop back, it. Yep. pop it up to the roof of your mouth, and that's when you get that to turn over. Yep. And that, that already sounds a lot more like a goose than the party horn. Mm -hmm. So where do you go from that step? So then from there, then it's hands. So a lot of people will just wrap it just like that, and you can do that. For me, I like to wrap and I take my middle finger and I bring it in. And it runs right along the edge of that call. And then your other hand just rests on top. Okay. This hand doesn't do much. It's pretty much just resting there. But it goes from. Yeah, man, that thing, that jargon call sounds like a goose. I'm telling yep. you what. And, you know, if you are a beginner caller, that's all you need to kill geese oh, yeah. right there. I mean, yep. It, it, there are a lot of things different about turning geese or getting a comeback, comeback calls, that type of thing. But when you are hunting out there, if I can blow just what you just blew, I'm, I'm going to kill geese in the field. Yep. All right, so what's next? So then you can get your cluck. <clears throat> your cluck. Pop that tongue. Okay. That's all you're doing. So, so you're not doing the, the, the moan part first. You're just nope. popping your tongue and just doing the cluck. Let's hear yep. it. So. <laughs> When you're in the field, when are you going to choose to use the full honk versus the, just the cluck? Well, a lot of it's, it's situational, so just read birds. So I'll, I'll usually do a, a lot of honking the farther out. Closer those birds get, I'll start just throwing some clucks in. And you can start manipulating it with your hands for high pitch, low pitch. Okay. You can do that with your voice, too. Okay. So just like when you're talking. So let's just go through just a honk and a cluck. Mm -hmm kind of sequence if you're out in the field and, and you've got geese on the horizon. Yep. 
And already what you've done right there is you've made those sound like more than one goose. Yep. So now if you've got geese feeding on the ground and they're protective of what they're eating, they're going to sound like a realistic goose spread. And I'm guessing the direction you turn yourself while you're in your blind or while you're calling makes it sound like those clucks and honks are coming from different directions. Exactly. Too. Yep. All right. That's fantastic. And I want to remind folks, the Wisconsin Waterfowl Expo is coming up on August 27th in Oshkosh. Dave's going to be there. Uh, with the Fowl Life. The Fowl Life's going to have a booth and presentations, and we're trying to talk him into uh, uh, going for the uh, state goose calling championship again. I don't know if we haven't quite talked into that yet, but he's going to be there. So you can ask him personal questions at the Waterfowl Expo, sponsored by the Fowl Life. We're going to have jargon calls there, provider lifestyle, uh, rubs, spices. It's going to be phenomenal. I mean, dogs, boats, Benelli's, Vortex, it's all going to be there in one place, and the experts are going to be there. So take me into the next thing that we're talking about when you're in a field. So you've got your moan, uh, at, at, which is the basic part of the honk. The mm -hmm. moan and then the cluck is a honk. Yep. Then the cluck. What's next? My favorite note, spit note. Oh, it's, he went right. He, he went, went deep right, on that right yeah, away. I'm swinging for the That's home tough. Run. It's a very tough note. Why don't you explain how to do the spit note and take us through it? Because this one takes a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. Don't get discouraged. I mean, no. I'm, I'm a... Four or five out of ten caller. Dave's a ten out of ten caller. Don't get discouraged. You got to keep practicing this you stuff. Do. It doesn't just come overnight. No, it doesn't. And Show us that note. <laughs> wow. Okay. Now, what are you doing with that? <laughs> so that one, it's it's a spit note. It's like you're spitting. <laughs> What's the second <laughs> thing you do there, though? That <laughs> that little grunt. That so what it really is, is, is taking that tongue, pushing it up hard, and I'm cutting that arrow. Okay. All right. And then show us that again. So if you've got your honk, your cluck, um, let's talk about the moan real quick, mm -hmm. which is the first part of the cluck. Because a lot of guys, uh, w when you have several callers, if you have a bunch of them doing just the moan when geese are coming, it can be helpful. It can cr create the uh, illusion that a lot of the geese on the ground are moaning or feeding mm -hmm. along with the calling. So show us what the moan is. It's really kind of the first part of the honk. It is. Yep. When you add your hands to it. Yeah, and you can, so once you do learn that and, and you can manipulate that and, and run it for longer, mm -hmm. That's, that's a good, that's a great call if you have someone else who's more experienced who's calling along with you. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's a pretty easy note. I, I mean, a, a honk, a cluck, and a moan, those are the only three. Yeah. So if you're doing that in the blind and you've got a caller like you, what kind of, what are you going to add to the sequence after that? Well, it, so it becomes a team calling thing then. So for us, we've got, you know, four or five guys that can call very well. You'll take one guy that'll lead, you know, and that guy will, will go through his sequence. And everybody else will follow him. So if I'm going fast on a call, I want other people to go fast. If okay. I'm really mellow, I want everyone else to be mellow. All right. And those people kind of have to read. You trust the guy that's, that's your lead caller that he knows how to read birds. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and take us through a sequence uh, just so you guys can see what Dave's uh, capable of, how, how many different birds it sounds like, and then we'll go back through the basics of the original honk, the cluck, and the spit note. Give it a shot. All right. Yeah, every time I hear it, man, raises the hair on my <laughs> arms, Dave. That is awesome, and that is why you're the state uh, goose calling champion of Thank Wisconsin. You. So um, real quick, before we go, take us through that uh, honk mm -hmm. and the cluck first so that you can be working on that. Yep. We're going to have more podcasts down the road that show you some of the more difficult things. But I'll tell you what, even in that sequence, you were doing honking, clucking, moaning, and the spit note, yep. and just in different ways and manipulating your hands in different ways. Exactly. So if you get down a honk, a cluck, a moan, you're going to be able to do a lot of what you just did there as long as you practice 
and, and take it to the field. You know, yes, sometimes you can drive the people you live with crazy yeah. blowing it in, in, but practice on the way to work. You don't have to be in the house to practice. Um, we're going to show you that basic honk and cluck one more time. And if you get those down and then you master the spit note, you're going to be killer in the field, literally. So we'll do it again with no hands. And it's just party horn. Raise that, that, that back part of your tongue. Just oof, oof. Okay. And then the clock is just oof. Bop, 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 bop. The moan. And put those three together for us one more time. Yeah, and what I noticed there is when you're going, you're doing two different notes. Yep. They're two different notes, and all that's changing them really is the movement of your hand. Yep. So as you compress more of the air as it's coming through, you're going to lower that note. Yep. And so if you work on that, you're going to have a pretty dynamic calling ability, but it will take practice. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening on the Fall Life Podcast Midwest Series. Dave Nelson, former Goose Calling Champion, State of Wisconsin. I'm Joel Clayfish. We'll see you next time.